Hey yo everyone! With the UD Shard event going on once again, a lot of people ask me what is the best Pokemon to summon with UD Shards. So in this video, I want to answer that question, but first, let's take a look at the event itself. The UD Shard drop event happens once in a while, like every four weeks or so, and gives you a chance to drop UD Shards on normal and elite dungeons. I sometimes make videos on drop testings to see which map has the better drop rates, but my best suggestion is that you should always enjoy this week to raid for your held items. You just go to your Pokemon's held item section, you click down here on how to get and you can see like all the maps that are available to raid for held items. And as a reminder, the Pokeland week of events always starts on a Friday and ends on Thursday. So you have until Thursday day 25 to raid the most maps that you can to get the most uni shards that you can. Taking a look at the other available events is the same as every other week, so we have like Overlord stickers for shards, and obviously as well for firebooks. If you are a recharger, remember there's Delibird transport coupons available for both firebooks and groundon books. So if you recharge a little bit more, that's why I always suggest the groundon books for the Delibird transport coupons. And we also have the Ode to Joy event going on, which you can basically just recharge a dollar every day and you will get some cool rewards with the third day and the fifth day that you recharge you get an extra reward together with that. Let me just claim my one dollar recharge thing. And those Pokemon capsule coupons by the way they can be used instead of diamonds on the Pokemon capsules. Even if it does not have any icon indicating anything related to those Pokemon capsule coupons, if you have them in your bag and when you are going to spend diamonds it uses the coupons instead. And as a reminder if you are recharging for anything at all in this game remember to use Eptoid with my code on your Aptoid wallet, my code DennyView1, to get a bonus of 15% on all of your recharges. When you are spending money on these kinds of games, every little bit matters, so while you are helping yourself, you are also helping the channel, so thank you. Now let's talk about the main topic of this video, which is using your shards. Before all of this, I strongly recommend to use diamonds to summon new Pokemon that you want. You have an advanced capsule gift event, it's here every single day, every single day the Pokemon is different, you can see the prediction of the whole week on the Pokemon Legends Club website, I share that every week. And if you have no idea how this event works, I have recent videos related to this. I recently summoned Victini from the Advanced Capsule Gift, so you can check that out if you are interested. That is my first suggestion related to shards, which is don't summon Pokemons with shards that you can summon with diamonds instead. Not just that, but there are always other uses for uni shards, which is for example example getting new overlord pokemon in order to get yourself overlord pokemon you not only need the overlord stickers but you need the original pokemon itself as well so if you want to spend unishars to summon both the original pokemon and the overlord stickers for that pokemon that will be expensive for you some cheap overlord pokemon that i usually recommend are always first of all overlord latias and latias because those two overlords will always be useful for your whole game on any team and overlord victini itself which also increases the damage of any of your teams. Other use of the Inishards can also be the held items. Some Pokemon like Overlord Rayquaza or if you are a whale like Overlord Sword and Shield, you can get their held items at already plus 6 for 1600 Inishards or some Firebooks. But obviously if you want to save money, you don't just want to spend Firebooks like that, so you prefer using Inishards for those if you can. But the item that people use Inishards the most is to exchange strike cards with them. Every 4 weeks or so there is an event where where you can exchange your Unishards for Strike Cards. You can exchange 100 Unishards for 900 Strike Cards and you have 50 exchange chances to do this. So if you have 5,000 Unishards, you can get yourself a total of 45,000 Strike Cards. Strike Cards are used to increase the stats of your Pokemon and after your Pokemon stat reaches 149, you can use 30 Strike Cards for each level up. So with the 45,000 Strike Cards that I mentioned, that means that you can increase your stats by 1500. That is exactly what I have on my Arceus special attack for example and you can basically just see we have 149 physical attack, 1500 special attack and you can see the stat difference over here. It's basically double of my physical attack. And even if we are comparing my shield for example to my creator Arceus, my shield has pretty high power actually compared to my Arceus because my shield has a second ability 
that is a double S rarity, also has a third ability, also has a dream ability, and all of those things just give to the Pokemon what I like to call a fake power, because all of those things are higher rarity, so they give more power to your Pokemon, but they don't actually give you stats. And for example, my shield that is 9.5 million power, compared to my Arceus, which is only 1 million power more. You can take a look at, for example, the speed of shield compared to my Arceus, or even, well, the physical attack of my shield, which is the main attack of this Pokemon, compared to my Arceus special attack, which is his main attack. Like, the numbers are much higher because of the strike card investment that I have on my Arceus. And I always do recommend that if you already have a main attacker, a decent attacker on your account, you have to invest on one attacker per team, so if you do not have strike cards, it's a strong recommendation that I have to use those Unishards to get strike cards. Okay, if you really really want to summon Pokemon with Unishards, remember that Pokemon have two prices. Some Pokemon will cost you 1600 Unishards and others will cost you 2000 Unishards. That is obviously assuming that you don't have any shards for those Pokemon, so they will have that price. Because for example, if you already have some shards of those Pokemon, you will just spend the remaining shards that you need with uni shards. And if I want to summon another Tapu Fini, it would consume 160 Tapu Fini shards and 400 uni shards. Okay, with that out of the way, if you really want to summon Pokemon with uni shards, you want to select Pokemon that are a little bit universal, Pokemon that can fit on any team so that you don't have many regrets later. And probably the Pokemon that players usually suggest the most is Ho-Ho. Not only Ho-Ho has very decent damage for your early and mid game, but also Ho-Ho has a very important skill which makes all of your team unkillable for one round. And this buff not only makes your team unkillable, but also gives all of your teammates a 35% attack buff for two rounds. Oh, and this is not just for the teammates, it's also for Ho-Ho itself. Another suggestion as a damage buffer is also Victini. Victini is a Pokemon that can fit on any team and he doesn't need to do anything. Even though in the early and mid game, Victini can be a very strong attacker because it has a nice coverage of moves, but Victini itself it says in the passive that increases the crit damage of your Pokemon, but not only this, there's a little bit of a description missing. Victini also increases the crit rate of all of your team, even if Victini dies in the process. And since crit rate is a stat that a lot of players are missing on their first months of gameplay, it makes Victini especially good Pokemon. And not just that, Victini is also very nice to Overlord because it only costs like 1000 uni shards, which provides you even more damage to all of your teammates through his passive. The second section of Pokemon that I could suggest you to summon with uni shards would be the Sacrifice Pokemon. Sacrifice Pokemon are usually Cobalion, Terrakian, Virizion, and Keldeo, and they are called Sacrifice Pokemon because on their second ability, they can have the ability of Sacrifice. And basically, when they die, they will increase all the remaining Pokemon's both attacks and both defenses by 50% and speed by 30%. This is massive in your first months of gameplay because not everybody has an answer to the sacrifice ability. The only reliable ways that you have to counter the sacrifice ability is with the Ash Pikachu Wish Star, which is very hard to come by, or with the Volcanion support that is already leveled up. But remember, most people do not have that. So if you have, for example, a Cobalion in your team that is a level 1 Cobalion, that is the best thing about sacrifice Pokemon, they are meant to die. So you can just have a level 1 Cobalion with a sacrifice ability, and the moment that Cobalion dies, it will give a buff of both attacks and defenses to all of your team and speed as well. And you want to know the best thing? You can have two of those. You can have, for example, Cobalion and Verizion on the same team and just have one attacker. And that one attacker will get a massive amount of stats the moment that Cobalion and Verizion dies. My third suggestion, if you really want to spend the Unishards to summon Pokemon, is getting yourself some weather buffers according to the Pokemon that you already have in your account. So this is a little bit type specific, but weather buffers are Pokemon that have a specific skill, which is a buff, to a specific type of Pokemon, increasing 
using 50% defenses and 100% skill power to that specific type. So for example, Tornadoes is the weather buffer for flying type teams. And then for example, we also have Topofini, which is the weather buffer of fairy type teams. And usually the weather buffers also have an extra effect together with their buff for that specific type of team. I will leave the names of the screen of all the weather buffers that exist in Pokemon Legends. But if you already have some Pokemons of some specific types that you enjoy, it might be a good idea to get yourself a weather buffer. Let's just say, for example, that you already have a Ho Ho and a Lugia. You can get yourself a Tornadoes to buff those Pokemon further. Or let's just say that you got yourself a Diancy and a Xerneas from the capsules. You can get yourself, for example, a Tapafini. All of those are just examples, so just get the weather buffer that adapts to your situation. That is it for me for today. We are almost at 20,000 subscribers, by the way. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next video.